The Krikor and Clara Zorab Information Center is a research library housed in the Diocesan Center in New York and contains rich intellectual and cultural resources for both Armenians and non-Armenians. Founded in 1987 through a generous donation by Dolores Zorab Liebman, the center is named in honor of Liebman's parents, Krikor and Clara. An accomplished lawyer, Krikor Zorab was also a community leader who was elected to the Ottoman Parliament in 1908. As a champion of Armenian rights and an advocate for Armenian unity and freedom, he faced much adversity from Ottoman authorities and was murdered in 1915 at the outset of the Armenian Genocide. As the first Armenian information center of its kind, the Zorab Center was opened under the leadership of Archbishop Torkom Manugyan, then primate of the Eastern Diocese, and blessed by His Holiness Vaskin I, the late Supreme Patriarch and Catholicos of all Armenians, on November 8, 1987. Since its opening, the Zorab Center has acquired an impressive book collection that includes works on Armenian history, literature, art history, politics, and culture. The volumes are printed primarily in Armenian, English, French, and Turkish. The collection dates from the mid-17th century and represents publishing centers in Istanbul, Yerevan, Isfahan, Paris, Venice, Vienna, Beirut, and New York. The center is also home to a large number of academic journals and newspapers. The Zorab Center regularly welcomes academics and researchers who use its range of resources for their projects. Uh, during the research for my book, uh, Children of Armenia, uh, I used the Zorab Center extensively. Uh, my research involved uh, looking at the aftermath of the Armenian Genocide, and there really no, there's no place that holds these materials, books, newspapers, archives, and things like that. So I used the New York Public Library and the Columbia University Libraries, but I also came to the Zorab Center uh, to look at their collection of books, the Armenian American newspapers, and there were a lot of things that you basically cannot find anywhere else. Over the years, sure, I've been in, in and out of the Zorab Center doing research on site. Um, I mean, just recently, um, I've been working with the um, Carlin Maradian interviews uh, for more work I'm doing on Arshil Gorky. And of course, the Zorab Center has the uh, collection of those interviews. And over the years, I've, I've worked on various writers and historical issues here and have had uh, access to some text that you can't get anywhere else. The Zorab Center's collection is enriched by historical artifacts integral to the understanding of Armenian culture and history. In terms of some of our treasures, we do have the first Bible that was ever uh, printed in Armenian, which was printed in 1666 in Amsterdam. We have some Cilician coins that were donated by a local Armenian and we have several hemayils, which are very interesting sort of scrolls um, that are sort of a unique part of Armenian, the Armenian literary tradition. Um, we really enjoy getting groups to come to the center and showing them all of these things just because touching these things and becoming acquainted with them sort of in a tactile way, I think really creates a, a, a unique type of link between that individual and Armenian history and culture. Since I started working at the Zorb Center two years ago, Rachel and I have put a lot of effort uh, into creating uh, more programming for the Armenian community in uh, New York and New Jersey. We've done quite a number of events uh, over the past couple years, uh, which have included book signings, uh, book presentations, lectures. Uh, we've also done things like movie screenings, uh, as well as wine and cheese receptions on the plaza outside of St. Martin Cathedral. Um, we have also organized uh, symposiums, conferences, uh, as well as the um, first global Armenian Library Conference uh, that was held at Holy Etchmiadzin last August. I think the Zorb Center uh, creates um, a hub or a space for a conversation about uh, Armenian issues, Armenian American issues, um, and, and that's really, really important, um, particularly here in New York City. Uh, but beyond that as well, because I'm talking about the blog as well and its presence on the internet, which is growing as well. So I think it, it, it's, a, it's a place where uh, conversations can happen and it's a place where many voices can be heard in that conversation. So, uh, and that is a, um, really, that is because of the diversity of the programming and the information that's 
uh, put out there from Missouri Center. In addition to offering a diverse collection and a variety of cultural programming, the Zorab Center opened its doors to high school and college students who serve as interns in the center throughout the year. The interns undertake many different responsibilities, most importantly, entering books into an online cataloging system. Other tasks include digitizing videos, books, and newspapers, and assisting with research projects. My job is to catalog books, and perhaps the most interesting part about that is seeing all the different types of books that we have. Uh, books with poems, uh, different stories, different histories, uh, different kingdoms of Armenia, different times. For many interns, the Zorab Center has provided an avenue to learn more about Armenian history and culture, and be exposed to Armenian-related events and activities in the community. For others, it has reawakened their sense of being Armenian. Aside from completing work in the Zorab Center, the interns forge a bond with the center and with one another. Uh, what I like about the Zorab Center is that there's a cultural aspect to it. It's more than just a library. Um, I've been cataloging books in Armenian, so my Armenian has improved. Um, a lot of the times I find myself in the stacks and I'll see an interesting book and I'll just I'll pick it up and I'll start reading it. Well, since I started college this year, I really felt like I was lacking a portion of my Armenian-ness that I was so involved with before, with Armenian school and working at Armenian school and camp, and I felt like I was distant with that since I went to college. So I thought it would be just the thing I needed to stay connected to my Armenian identity while away at school. The Zorab Center is not only a place of work, but also a place of community, and uh, I've met a lot of Armenians here that share the same interests as I do and it's been fun uh, socializing with them, getting to know them and it's really been a great experience. Every day I come to work I don't really feel like I'm coming to work, I feel like I'm coming to learn new things, to be with the books, to learn history, to be around other Armenians. I've met so many other youth my age. Krikor Zorab was an influential writer whose voice was well known in journalistic and literary circles during his lifetime and has survived through his writings to this day. At the core of Dolores Zorab Lehman's vision for the Zorab Center was a desire to share her father's legacy with future generations and to help preserve the cultural heritage of the Armenian people. It's very important to have uh, places like the Zorab Center throughout the diaspora and part of the reason is that as a diaspora we have no government. So our records, our history, uh, the lives that we've lived are, are basically lost unless someone keeps track of them, protects them, uh, houses them. Cultural centers have to remain or be understood as the essential place of any culture's identity. Um, our libraries, our archives, um, our museums, a place like the Zorab Center really combines all of that and I think has great potential for more. It's a really a vital place <clears throat> for research, for scholarly work, uh, and for community.